House. Uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Clayton Cosgrove. Mr. Speaker, I take it this is working? It is. Right. Yes. Well, I, I just, that was an extraordinary speech because Nikki Wagner is obviously orbiting a stratosphere that no one else is because she got up and said that there's overwhelming support for this bill, which inherent within it is a massive broken promise from the government, but we'll get to that in a minute. But Nikki Wagner's defence of this bill and the evidence that she provided for her claim that uh, Cantabrians overwhelmingly supported an abrogation yet again of their democratic right to have a say in their regional uh, local government was that Fed Farmers, sort of National Party in gumboots, um, Naitahu and a couple of others, in fact I think that was it, had said this was a good thing. Yet what she failed, oh local government New Zealand, of course highly representative local government New Zealand of grassroots Cantabrians. Fed Farmers highly representative, overwhelmingly, of 350,000 gra plus grassroots Cantabrians. But what she failed to uh, acknowledge, given that I think, was she on the select committee? I think so. She is, or she is the select committee, was a thing called submissions. Because people get to have their say directly before a select committee through a thing called submissions. And if you look at the submissions, there were 95 of them, Mr. Speaker. And how many were in support? Five. How many were opposed? 90. Even Nikki Wagner and Jerry Brownlee could probably do the math using all their fingers and toes, and work out the percentage on that. Five submissions out of 95 supported it, and 90 submissions out of 95 opposed it. So I say to Ms Wagner, that's called evidence before her own select committee, which of course she conveniently failed to mention, apart from Fed Farmers, Local Government New Zealand, and Naitahu. Well, this is, I'll tell you what this is about. This is about a massive broken promise by this government. Because Nick Smith said in March 2010, quote, whatever the circumstances, the next regional council elections in Canterbury will take place no later than those scheduled for late 2013. The explicit intent is for the commissioners to withdraw and be replaced by elected representatives as soon as their tasks are achieved and the present systematic issues are resolved. Now that was a cast iron promise. I remember the debate. I remember us uh, uh, providing warnings that this could be rolled over yet again, but we were told by the government, no, 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 we're being negative. Uh, this is all about doing the right thing. This is a cast iron, pot riveted, vulcanized promise. Well, they broke it. That member, Nikki Wagner, broke it. And the best she can do today is cobbled together a, a number of untruths to say that the overwhelming uh, number of people in Canterbury and overwhelming Cantabrians, numbers of Cantabrians support it. Well, that is piffle, absolute piffle. If you look, if you look at what business people have said, if you look at what grassroots co uh, community members have said, that is total piffle. And I say this to Ms Wagner, people in Canterbury where I live and other colleagues live have had a bit of a guts for of being steamrolled by this government. Whether it be, of course, uh, Jerry Brownlee's promises around the earthquake, Jerry Brownlee's my way or the highway sort of blunderbuss, steamroll sort of uh, management style around the earthquake, his promise about things like, if you make improvements to your house, that'll be part of the deal, broken promise. They're, they're having a bit of a guts full of being told what to think, what to say, how to act, and being told to shut up and take the medicine. Actually, people in Christchurch and Greater Canterbury would like to have some say, like to have some say and make a contribution to their own future. But this government, of course, this government says they know best. And it's interesting, because in the Select Committee report, you have a look at it. The Human Rights Commissioner, of course, said this. Quote, this is uh, David Rutherford. The Commission considers that no good reason has been provided for extending the present legislation. Lack of public consultation about content or the continuing need for the legislation is an abuse of democratic process and does not reflect the real needs of Cantabrians. In our view, the present legislation has the potential to further exacerbate the resentment that has arisen in Canterbury as a result, and this is a very interesting words for a human rights commissioner to use, as a result of autocratic decision-making, unquote. So that's what the Human Rights Commissioner says. 
Then we get, of course, to the uh, regulatory impact statement because the government ignored the regulatory impact statement. We know that the Department of Internal Affairs, their advisers, and the Ministry of Environment, their advisers, recommended option one, which was legislation to establish transitional, a transitional mixed governing body for ECAN with the provision for the Minister of Local Government to review arrangements by 2017. They rejected that. They absolutely rejected that. The RIS, of course, went on to say this. It made three points. I'll read this one. Quote, the extension of the Commissioner's terms would continue to deny Canterbury residents the opportunity to vote for representatives of ECAN. Also, given the progress made by commissioners, there is no apparent reason for continuing this level of intervention, which was used in response to ECAN's previous serious and systematic dysfunction. Now, that's what the RIS said. That's what their own advisers said, and they rejected that advice. So what have we got stacking up? We've got 90 out of 95 submitters saying we oppose this. We've got the vast majority of Cantabrians, apart from their fed farmer mates, uh, saying we oppose this. We've got their own official advisers, the Department of Internal Affairs and the Ministry of Environment, recommending a transitional provision and a different course of action leading to democratic processes. And we also have the actual regulatory impact statement saying this is undemocratic, saying it's autocratic, saying it is wrong. And, of course, to cap it all off, as Nicky Wagner hides behind a desk, we have the biggest bro one of the biggest broken promises uh, uh, articulated in this parliament, in this parliament. Because why is it that Ms Wagner, the member for Christchurch Central, doesn't trust her own community to be part of decision-making processes? Maybe, like Jerry Brownlee, she fears this fact, that the community may stand up and say, we don't agree, we believe, government, you are wrong, and we want a different course of action. I suspect that's why these uh, people do not want Cantabrians to have a say. They do not want to listen to any alternative advice. We had Bill English before the select... Oh, we, sorry, we had the manufacturing inquiry, I digress slightly, uh, on Monday. And members of former president of the Manufacturers and Exporters Association, I asked him, I said... When was the last, have you had engagement with uh, Minister Joyce, Minister of Economic Development? No, none, zero since he took the portfolio. They've offered to speak, offered uh, to meet, doesn't want to know. Yet another example of this government taking advice from everybody else that suits their purpose, taking advice from yes people. Even if you look at economic policy, the IMF, the Reserve Bank, the Treasury all say we're heading for the rocks in respect of deficit but Bill English, of course, says, I know better than everybody else, including today we find out the Westpac Bank. These people, this government, take advice from those who will doff their hat, tug their forelock, and say, yes, we agree. I worry, Mr Speaker, that even in our public service, the days of public servants are being allowed to give free and frank advice without fear or favour, such that they can say to a minister, minister, we believe that your course of action is wrong, but we are professionals. If you deem it appropriate to go down that path, even though we think it won't work, we will implement for you because we are a professional public service. That's appropriate advice to say we think you're wrong, but we'll do what we're told. You are the, you are the elected government. I fear, sir, that like this legislation, this government has dumbed down our public service to the point where they've just given up. There's no point in saying it won't work, whether it be charter schools, whether it be the, the student ratios, whether it be this bill, sir, whether it be the school closures in Christchurch, it's just they're going to do it anyway. They won't listen to the advice. So I say to Ms Wagner, I say to Ms Wagner, and I'll smoke ball, the old cigar man in the front row, I look forward to the, to the local body elections when Ms Wagner will be called to account in the next 12 months, in the next 12 months by her. Now I'll tell you what's nasty, is denying people the right to have a say and denying people the right to have a vote. That, Minister Coleman, is more than nasty. That is autocratic. But that member doesn't want to know. So it'll be an interesting local body campaign as people call Ms Wagner to account and say, why is it the member for Christchurch Central won't allow Cantabrians the right to have their say? Why is it she broke a promise? Why is it there's an autocratic rule down there? Because the other problem with commissioners, sir, is they're answerable to this crowd, not to the electors, 
they have no they have no responsibility to local electors and they're not held to account by them. They do what they're told up here and that is wrong, it is autocratic, this bill should be opposed with every fibre we have in our bodies. I call Eugenia Sage.